Okay, so here I am, Nicole Hartley Bradford up in Canada, and here I've got Meredith and Dawe who are down in in Baja at the moment, and and Bree is in wait Northern California. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and Enki in more Southern California, right? Uh, no, right by San Francisco. Oh, okay. So mid North California. <laughs> yeah. And and what we all have in common is that we are each part of the, I don't know, part of the maybe like the central kind of guild or something for this garden, this for food forest that is growing. It's going to happen called Lighting the Edge. It's a gathering. And I wanted to meet you all and find out more about each of you and where you're coming from and also record it so that then more people can find out about this experience that they might decide to steer themselves toward. And uh, it just, oh my God, this lights me up to think that this video will go out there and will each of us spread it, right? Will each of us send the link out to our circles and there are edge workers out there who are gonna hear what we're about to say and are gonna be like, that's for me, I'm gonna get there. Mm -hmm. And there's others who are gonna be like, damn, I'm gonna miss that and are gonna wanna hear about it after or something like that. So yeah, whether you can or whether you can't, it's all good. Well, we're weaving, we're weaving something magical and the ripples will ripple out so how about how about the the origin story first? Hmm. <laughs> Where is that? You know, the image that popped start. to mind. There's like a yeah. The image that popped to mind to me was the three of us sitting up on that art piece Same. <laughs> at, at Burning Man. So I mean, time isn't real. So I mean you could date this back to the center or wherever you want, but I feel like the three of us coming together at the burn last summer was that we knew that um, we knew that something had to come out of this, the three of us. I, that, I think that's where the birth started. Yeah, I think we came together at that point and there is a knowing in all of us. There was like such a deep connection and such a really a deep knowing um, that we wanted to create, that we're going to create together. But I think the origin, I don't know, it kind of starts when we came together originally in, in the center in a community house of 20 other people and to experience living amongst so many people and creating systems together and how do we show up, what are boundaries, just like everything that comes with community. I think that's when I really start to see um, all of you and really get to know all of you. And my mind is like, I would live with these people forever. Like I would build anything with these people. <laughs> and that feels true to this day. Like dream team for sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I, mean, I would echo both of those points. And, and I would say the point of origin for me was is really, was really maybe when I was about eight years old. I have these memories of being eight and reading in magazines about like these, I don't know, corporate jobs and, and this idea that people would spend 40 hours a week doing something they didn't like. And, and it's like my eight-year-old self had this awareness of like, that is really strange. And, and I think, so I think it, it starts even back then of like, wh what are the other ways that we can live that are really alivening? What, what are the other ways that we can live where we don't have these interactions like with our boss or, or with whomever take up such a large part of our day where it's really this surface level thing that that if if some of us are super lucky we have a job that we're really passionate about but so many of people the default is not and then that pain turned into you know when I was in in college experimenting with communities and then eventually meeting Brie and Enki at a community in San Francisco and, and us all wondering you know as has kind of been said like what else is possible and then and then having that energy at Burning Man and and we found ourselves on just like on this top of this giant art piece, which, you know, there, there weren't signs saying you can climb this giant art piece. 
but we just saw, oh, we can do this. And I think that's also been the realization in my life is, oh, I want something else. Wait, I can do it. We can, we can rent a campground and we can get all of our, you know, crazy other people that think this way and, and we can test it out. We can try it out. We can, we can just start living the, the other culture that, that we all want in our lives. Mm. Oh. Meredith, then what about you? I met these three at this community that we all lived together as well. And I think getting to witness their energy and the collaboration that is just, you know, building moments together. Um, these three's energy is very magnetic and it, it calls that sense of community. And so someone who came in later, I felt like I just was kind of brought into the fold in that way and have been able to witness that creation that's possible from with these three. And I'm, I'm here to join. Mm. And, and Meredith and Bree and Enki, like Dawe kind of gave his personal origin story. Do you, I would love to hear something from each of you about your kind of when it, when it kind of caught up with you. Mm. Got it. How to how to sum sum up? You know, it's I feel like this is it's kind of the culmination of of a of a lifetime piece. So you know how we sum those things up are tough, and I think Dawei touched on community in such a beautiful note. Um, so the other piece here for me is that this is a profoundly spiritual endeavor, um, and ultimately it comes out of for me this this felt sense of oneness of of everything. And for me, this journey has been a little over two years now. I was really blessed to have an extremely transcendent experience um, on ayahuasca a little over two years ago, um, where it was kind of a direct experience of non-duality and, and being the entire universe in outside of time. And kind of woke up after you know 34 years as a materialist, atheist, didn't believe in anything, and just couldn't unsee that. Um, I remember kind of the first thought as I came back to form of just, well, nothing will ever be the same ever. Um, like, this is it. Um, and so, you know, going around other more traditional religious communities, spending some time in a Zen monastery, there was something that was missing there and not congruent with where we're going and what, what culture is. And so to me, what we're trying to do here is, is a marriage of like all the beautiful, vibrant individual expression of life um, from a place of knowing that our deepest identity is, is, is one, is, is fundamentally interconnected. Um, and I think that has to be the basis of the true community that we're trying to build in the future. Um, I think the only way you can have the true vibrant free individual expression that that we we can't lose and a cohesive harmonious collective is is through spiritual realization and so um i want to create community spaces that support that and enable people to to go there and, and live that in a direct way thank you yeah i'll share a little bit i um what comes up is like, I feel like I spent the first 24 years of my life so lost, so confused. And especially at the, you know, 22, 23, 24, I was in the stage of, of you know, what I would call depression where I would just break down and, and cry and was, had no idea why, but I had this feeling that there had to be more to life. I was working, I was going to the bars on the weekend, drinking a bunch of alcohol to go back to work to pay my rent. And I was like, is this really it? Is this what we do here? This, this can't be. And 
there is a shift in me that was like a light switch. And I've talked to people that have also had this shift, this like deep knowing that it's, I need to shift my life totally. And I bought a one-way ticket to San Francisco and I packed everything in a single suitcase and I moved in with my sister. And that's when my whole life seemed to kind of open and align. And also thanks to a guided uh, medicine journey with, with psilocybin, I realized this is this is it and the, this is in me actually but I had to go through so much that was keeping me from that so much of the first 24 years of my life that was stacking up inside of me stopping me from expressing myself as as Brie as an artist as a, as a lover of life as a lover of movement as a lover of people of community and once I realized that I have that in me and moving into communities where others felt that way, I realized like we can do anything. Like we can build anything and a lot needs to be rebuilt. <laughs> and these are the people I wanna build it with. The people that are also working through it that are unraveling and, and peeling back those layers to, to the full expression of themselves, the unique being that is them. And so realizing how much fun this, this experience could be, how empowered I feel in this body, it's like, let's call all of our people in all around the world all of our tribe which is everywhere it's all of us actually and let's create a new earth i was recently i i grew up one of 11 cousins and we all lived within a mile of each other and i grew up with this like intense um, community of family members with a really high energy and I just remember this longing my whole childhood of to be with everyone I, I hated this aloneness and and yet when we we're all together there was so much pain as well when you know when all of the families together it was like I so desperately have this yearning for this community and yet I the way things are going I have so much so much of the pain that the dynamics of the culture that our community was living in like deep Catholicism that was just very painful to me as a child and these other dynamics and so it was this desire and unsettling and recently having come back together with all these family members and feeling the joy of this like communion of all of us reminded me like oh this is where my my yearning for community was created and and this isn't quite it <laughs> and this isn't what I want and so it needs to be something else and trying to discover what that means for me is is really my motivation of what I can do in a community that, you know, brings us all in in the same way, but is driven with different by different values to be together. That feels like a really important value to me as I've been thinking about lighting the edge. This thing Meredith just said about like something needs to be different. I'm not really sure what. Maybe. But that that was some idea I had. We just need we can create a container where where we try it, and and where that is sort of the ethos is the the experimentation, the being not being too afraid of of getting it wrong. That that we're not searching for some sort of perfection to this gathering, but really we all will have a an authentic necessity for being there for for having that connection. And let's get a group of people together where where it's you know safe safe enough to just try different ways of loving different ways of, of creating connection yeah you really you you lit my edge right there this mm. this not getting it wrong and not getting it right like just this experimenting and and trying something so different than what my box is okay with and I've been in this this kind of unweaving of well in not not really the unweaving yet but finding out all these rules that I live by like I, I was I was sick yesterday I had I woke up with a headache and it 
it was like so much pain all at once that I already started being nauseous and I'm staying in a community house with with a, a bunch of people and I noticed because I'm in this experiment of discovering what my rules are I noticed that I was living by this rule that if I'm sick then I got to push through it on my own like I, mm. I, I can't bother anybody mm. even though when when I let them know, hey, I'm I'm not out and about because I'm sick, they're like, let us know if you need anything. And I was like, you can't bother them. You're sick. Like stick it up. Like and and then and then the questions that I that I'm working with are, you know, what's so bad about this me breaking this rule? What's so right about the rule? And just really, really getting underneath and and finding out like oh discovering all this all all these emotions in me that they're like i said you know trapped in there still that finally get to start coming up and be felt and and to have especially you know i've been a community builder for like this has been my actual job for over 10 years i mean it was my job before that but i wasn't really noticing it or acknowledging that this was what i was alive for and I, I tried to I tried to make community happen so many ways, lots of gatherings, lots of potlucks, lots of get together and do rad things, and it's it's slowly but surely been you know, dawning on me that the part where we're actually a mess in front of each other, where we where we let ourselves break down, go liquid, so and then hold each other in that in ways that make it possible for healing to happen is I, I just realized that all this, this community that I'd been chasing, I'd been missing it because the, the space holding for healing wasn't happening. And, and now that I have this crazy bunch of space holders that I can just like literally go, can someone hold space for me in the next three hours? And someone's like, yep, me and zoom, we go and, you know, sometimes it's someone I've not met yet, but they they are adept enough space holders that they would say, yes, I can do it. And I'm adept enough now at inner navigating that it doesn't really matter how well they're holding the space because I'm holding the space too. And it makes emotional healing possible. And they get to see me like kind of come out from whatever layer I've been trapped in and we fall in love with each other a little bit and or we're in love with each other a little bit and then we we have that and it's amazing how fast it can happen anyway so to have this be and this is what i'll be you know this is what i put my hand up for to hold space for at lighting the edge is this emotional healing process dojo and like kind of spreading the some of the basic distinctions of of this kind of space holding that that I mean I think I, you know I've been a mom for 31 years and my big thing as a mom was I'm not going to do it the way my parents did it in this 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 and this way and I am going to do it the way they did it in this 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 way and the main one was about when my kids have feelings they're going to be allowed to have their feelings they're not going to be punished for having their feelings they're not going to be you know sent to their rooms to have them alone I'm going to be with them and still I didn't have, I mean, I can imagine how different it could be if I had the distinction I have now about it, holding space for them, that it could have been just, uh, anyway, so, I mean, this is a big part, like I said, of my, or like I said before we started the recording, <laughs> a big part of the, the, the pain that connects me with this, this guy in like guy in anger, guy in sadness, guy in fear and joy that of, of what else might be possible for humans and to hold spaces like this, like the emotional healing process spaces in the context of people coming together with this question, like what else is possible for human village, human community, human tribe, human groups, and and bringing this part because this part is so the magic for me yeah i'm so stoked to to be here with you and talk about this and find out more about each of you
And what are, yeah, what are each of you like, as far as you know, so far, bringing? I was just going to say that I'm so stoked you're here. I'm so stoked to know you and be connected and to co-create. Um, I have a lot of excitement in bringing different things. And so some of me is like, this is what I'm going to bring and I'm going to, I'm going to toss it this far away. And honestly, there's a piece of me that wants to really feel into what's alive closer to. Um, but I really enjoy movement practices amongst groups and to move that energy in the body. And so um, hoping to facilitate a couple of gatherings in which we'll, we'll move some energy in the body. You know, I have this thing written on the website, which is like, you don't have to be an expert space holder to hold a space. Consider making a proposal that's like, dangerous to your idea of what you can do right now so i have like some things i know how to hold space for and this just popped in my mind is i'm starting this new research for myself of how i've sort of split my myself energetically and and lived these dual lives for a lot of my life like on the one hand being this crazy edge pushing adventurer into like what's possible with consciousness and on the other for many years like working a very traditional job for Microsoft and, you know, to everyone at Microsoft just appearing like, ah, this dude is really into technology and like, and all of this stuff that we're doing to be a really valuable company in the world. And so, and I've done this in so many different ways, like with, with my mom, with other people in my family and just this constant splitting of the being. And so I don't know anything about how to reunify the being. And I'm going to say, by the time letting the edge comes around, I'm going to hold a space on energetically stitching the being back together. <laughs> Dude, wow. <laughs> I love that. I think what I can talk about is what's exciting to me right now. And I think that whatever I bring is gonna have some touch on sacred sexuality. And, and the piece for that is, it's probably the most buried part of our being in our modern culture. Um, we create you know, such narrow spaces where sexuality is actually really welcomed um, and everywhere else it's pushed into the unconscious. And so we live in this incredibly sexualized culture where actually being honest and clear about the desires that are in us is 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 not not available. It's it's not welcome, um, and I think that creates this just like this unconscious undercurrent everywhere that warps behavior, makes people feel unsafe, um, and leaves a lot of people lonely and isolated. Um, so I've just really been blown away at the power of spaces that um, welcome those elements and show people to approach them with consciousness and um, just the, the sense of freedom and expressedness um, that comes in those places when people feel genuinely just safe in their body to, to be with what's alive for them, to be with what they desire um, and to be witnessed in that um, is so incredibly liberating. And so I'm yeah just really excited to share, share that work. Awesome, thank you. I'm really going to lean into this not knowing how to do it and giving it a try anyway. I think, I, I feel that there's something else coming and I'm going to be open to that because I really am going to live that idea of just put yourself out there. And right now I can say that something I'm really excited to bring is Creativity through connection to nature and how we can use nature to build our gratitude and awareness of, of being within nature um, and the healing that that can provide. And also how this lighthearted joy of, you know, building an art piece with what's around you and noticing all the little details and how this interacts with this. So I'm bringing some creativity with natural elements, um, hopefully 
creating some flower arrangements that can help create energetic spaces. And because I do think that really it empowers a space when you can bring in the nature and set the tone of a space. Like I'm really impacted by the energies that are created in that way. And I'd like to bring that, um, that to everyone else too. Awesome. Thank Meredith, you. Meredith, we had a heart temple at Haydn when I was there that had such an incredibly gorgeous altar it's like a waterfall of flowers down from like a, a vase into a pool. And the degree of heart expansion that I found in this space was like past any MDMA journey I've ever experienced. Just stone cold sober. It was one of those things of like interaction, interaction. Just like, I didn't know my heart could be this blasted open. It's even more blasted open. Like just light pouring out of my eyes. And, and honestly, the piece that I relate to is the love that was poured into that altar. It was like the center of this temple was just vibrating. Um, so I'm so excited for you to bring that. Thank you, me too. I also wanna ask about like, what do you hope someone else brings? Mm. I'm excited not to know, actually. I'm excited for the things that surprise me. Like it's it's the emergence piece that's exciting in this of like, we have no idea what's gonna happen when this cauldron of ingredients comes together. Like it's it's not about the individual offerings for me, it's, it's how do they meet? And like, what's the unexpected alchemy at the edges of the two different things? Um, like that unpredictability is what like, oh, I'm just buzzing with it. Yeah, I second that. I'm super open to have my heart and mind like blown. And I think of the big piece of me is like, it doesn't matter what's brought. It's like, I just hope people want to contribute, that they feel that call. Like even if they don't necessarily, they didn't plan to, or they didn't know they were, but being in that space, like, oh, I feel, I feel safe to do that here. I feel able to contribute and play and to bring something that, I, that I've experienced or that I love to the space. And that, that's really exciting to me, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. yeah I, I talked a bit about like well I don't know if I talked about it here but one is like just wanting people to bring empowerment to other people so if there is some idea that someone's leaning into an edge or you like overhearing at the dinner table you know I've been thinking about this you know wanting that empowerment to come through of like oh well why don't you hold a space for that and and it can just be a co-discovery space. But then also, you know, people's feedback. I want people to bring their feedback on all the spaces being held, where it's not the attitude of like, yeah, this is my polished workshop that is like, you know, wrapped up in saran wrap. And like, that's the, you know, the shrink wrap you get in a store and like, this is the thing. But that I'm excited that this is going to be a gathering of people from different, you know, different perspectives, different schools, different contexts. And so if I'm delivering a workshop on conscious use of anger, that somebody else might have a totally different lens that, that they can give me feedback on. And so that's, that's what I'm really excited by is, yeah, what else, what I'm going to learn about what I've been sharing with other people. Mm. I really hope someone brings music that we can all participate in and I want to sing and I want to all be together singing and <laughs> and I want to do some movement that I didn't really have any idea would like connect me to my energy and in this like collective energy and those are two things that I just I'm like yeah that will really bring energy to the space that I really would enjoy. So very specifically those two. <laughs> awesome, thank you. I wanted, I, I, what I, something that came to me that I want, and maybe I'll get it before, because there's a few months. 
I I had to hand over my my wood fire bow uh, fire making kit to a security person, and I at the time I was like, <laughs> you really want this for yourself, don't you? Well, I can make another one, so I'm just gonna let go. And 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 later I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> I want I want I want that back, and there's no going back. But so I'm secretly hoping it's not a secret anymore that. Yeah, either before then or by then, I, ha I have my fire bow, my next fire bow kit so that I can practice making my fire out of wood. Mm. And yeah, I'm so, I'm so up to what you said, Dawe, about feedback. I, I just, I love, I love feedback culture. Like I love spaces where people can come up and be like, hey, can I give you some feedback about what you just did there? And I can be like, yeah, give it to me. Let me know and and maybe it'll knock me and maybe my grandma will be like man, man, man they're so mean but eventually i'll sort myself out and get it'll get through and yeah then this whole like optimizing and expanding out into a next edge and a next edge yeah and i i love the yeah the the spontaneous breakout music weave in stuff and i i love i don't remember how i have I talked it? I've been organizing some pretty cool events in the last 10 years. And one of my favorite things to do at gatherings is this thing. I call it a passion show. It's like a talent show, but you don't have to be talented and you don't have to do something artsy. Like you don't, it doesn't have to be like visual art, you know, it doesn't have to be music or poetry or dancing. It, it can be like, I mean, he's had this one guy once he brought this whole like friggin had a, he had a cool box and he had uh oh my internet's going wonky he, he he basically did some kind of science experiment in front of us and he explained all this like high level science in like language that a four-year-old could understand and i was just sitting there with my chin on the floor the whole time and i've seen like seven-year-olds do magic shows where they're like da -da -da -da. okay now everyone close your eyes <laughs> and they make the thing disappear and it's like that that worked for me. It was great. And I've heard some singing that was really off key, but it was just like so 100% authentic and awesome that I think I clapped louder for the off key singers than I clapped for the on key singers that night. Anyway, so I, I love that. Kind Maybe of your ears are out of tune. <laughs> <laughs> well, my ears were definitely tuned differently than theirs, perhaps. <laughs> hmm. So yeah, I yeah. Anyone watching this who's, you know, thinks. I mean, I I know people who, who who don't think they're good at anything, or that they think they're good at this, and it's not like something you would bring to, a gathering like this, and just invite everyone to think again, because only you have this special something maybe that that you could bring, and if it's a passion, if it's something you're alive about. Yeah, I want to know about it. And, and maybe it'll be enough to find out around a dinner table on the last day or something. You had something. I, I was talking to Nicole about this earlier. And yeah, something I'm excited about people bringing, we were talking about even just having a booth for listening to like, what is the pain in your life? And when I think about the culture that I want, it's it's where we are generous with this really valuable gift of ours, which is our attention and our love and our care. And, and if there's anybody out there thinking of coming to this that says, oh, well, I don't have something to contribute to this village that's happening. It's like, well, I just wouldn't believe you. Because <laughs> you, you, you have your love and you have your care. And that's those have been the most valuable things for me to receive. I think more than the content or anything else, it's just an attitude of contribution. Of like I'm not here as a consumer to consume an experience, but I, I'm here as a as a co-creator. And and however you do that, it, it doesn't matter. Hmm. I think Dawe, what you shared on too, like what that what that triggers for me is like this this embrace of the darker parts is also what I think distinguishes this from, from a lot of other spaces that are just focused on the light. 
And, you know, there may be, you know, a sense of authenticity, a sense of this, but there's, there's a range in which that's allowed. And maybe your authentic joy is welcome, but, but maybe not the grief or not the anxiety. And I think that's a core note of what we're building here is that there, there's a belief that you have to welcome that full range. If you, if you want the deepest ecstasy, you've got to be willing to go to the depths as well. Thank you. Yeah, I like that a lot. Like it really gave me, you know, the 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 name of this this gathering, lighting the edge. Like how can you light the edge unless you're on your edge? And where is the edge? It's it's where it gets dark. It's where it gets scary. It's where it gets like like freak you out and and to light that you have to go there and mm. and maybe it's just going there that lights it also and sharing about it and being really real about it that yeah i'm on an edge and i'm terrified and to have someone to hold space and be okay with you about it like yeah. are there any questions you want me to ask well you're thinking about that i'm just going to say that what i want to do i think with the recording is put the logistics in the show notes like so that we don't talk about that now other much further than we have here you can find out where it is how to get there all the and yeah and have We'll put a link to the, the website, which has got a bunch of different sections that people can check out to find out more. And I don't know, even if, if you find yeah. out that it's far, far away and you can't get there, I'm open to someone getting in touch with me about if they want to create something like this somewhere else. Be like a on the on the team about that. Are you guys in for that? I kind of think it would be nice for us to maybe share a little bit of the vision for the festival, kind of like the arc of it a little bit or, or what the shape of it is. I don't know how you guys feel about that. Sounds like you want to talk about that. Yeah. Um, Go. Yeah. What, what feels exciting about this to me is, you know, I've been to a lot of, you know, beautiful, chaotic, emergent festivals that are full of magic. Um, but lack intentionality. And I've been to, you know, a lot of beautiful transformational workshops that are incredibly deep and profound, but they lack a sense of play or creativity or emergence. And I think bringing those two notes together is what feels really exciting and unique about what we're trying to make in this space. Um, is can we can we do the depth of a workshop like that where we're intentionally probing in, into you know deep dark places in service of growth, but do it in a way that is a little bit less structured, that is re responsive to how a group is evolving, that's responsive to the to the group energy, um, that takes creative input from everyone, and is really this kind of organic emerging phenomena, um, and like the joy and play of that. So that that's the note to me of like, we're walking into a very fresh experiment and that always gets me excited. Yeah, for, for me, like one big thing became clear when, when Brie and he and I were talking at the very beginning and we're like, hmm, do we, do we want to have like a gathering or, or do we actually just want to put on like a, a workshop or, or, or a training? And it, it became pretty clear, like, no, I, I want to have this thing that could pop in ways that that we don't know about yet. And, and so really like this environment where it's a bunch of it's really a village and, and, and that we're in close enough contact with each other so that we'll have, you know, communal meals every day where we're kind of like all feeling into what we're creating together. And that if there is this thing of like, whoa, we actually, wh whatever, like the 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 number of 
workshops that people are holding is, is like way too much. Uh, we actually just want to go to the beach together and, and play in the sand that like that optionality is, is totally there. And, and so really this thing of not having a path that we're, that we're following. And so, yes, you know, in, in creating this thing, holding a loose container of like, okay, like we're going to handle some logistics about this. There's going to be food, you know, yada, yada. And like, we have all these people who have, are coming with ideas of the spaces that they want to hold. But, but beyond that, that it's really this or, organic thing that, that we're just throwing a bunch of really awesome people together and who knows what's going to come out of it. <laughs> I have this, this visual in my head and it's like us standing at the edge and we're like, all right, we're lighting the edge. Come on, everyone. Everyone's like, no, I'm really scared. And we're like, me too. I don't know, what to do, but come on. I swear, like, it's going to be great. And we're all just like tiptoeing toward the edge and, 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 you know, inviting others to do the same because backwards back that way is so uncomfortable in all of our systems that we can't possibly go back or we can't possibly stand over there anymore i have to go to the edge because i'm dying over mm -hmm. here and i don't know what's on the edge and i'm terrified but they're going to and they're they're holding each other's hands and they're supporting each other as they're lighting that edge and their hand is extended to me so i'm gonna i'm gonna go light my edge mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just so excited to play with all of you guys. <laughs> and all when you were talking about the beach, Dawei, I was just seeing us like rubbing sand on each other. And I was just, I'm definitely going to the beach. <laughs> and it's so beautiful how it's like, it'll grow, right? It's, it's all of us are individual, like what is called this here. And we've kind of attracted each other and, and Meredith and Nicole have joined and it's just going to keep growing to people that feel called to this mystery, this, this container that's being created now as we talk about it. It's so exciting because we have no idea who's going to show up and what's going to happen, but we have this intention of it being, you know, building a village and, and one of expansion and one of full expression and the shadows and the light and nature. And I'm like, this is a recipe for like, mm. <laughs> 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 mm. uh, yay how many more sleeps <laughs> <laughs> the countdown is on mm. is is there any anyone who wants to say anything else before we we close this space and leave anyone watching hungry for more i think there's a piece that came up as like, who is this for? You know, we've talked about, you know, anyone can come or, you know, bring whatever, but who is this for? I, I mean, I can, <laughs> I was tossing it to you guys, but I think like something that comes to mind is, you know, also the people that are questioning where they're standing, but maybe it's, Maybe you're not questioning. Maybe you, you want deeper connections, or maybe you know you you happen to find this 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 event through friends, and and for some reason it's calling you, or or maybe you're really angry, or maybe you're really sad, or maybe you're really happy and you want to share your light. It really it feels like the full spectrum of like bring it all. I think it's the Sorry. name. Go ahead, Dolly. You go. Okay. I mean, I think as we talk about the edge in the name, I, I think there is a piece here of um, being willing to to face intensity and face darkness um, is, is a piece. Um, like, we're really welcoming in everything here. And so I think this is a space for, for folks that want want to go into it and have have some capacity for holding themselves and um i don't think this is what's the way to put it um yeah to, to me there is a degree of like taking responsibility for self that that i would love to see of like you've probably done some work on yourself this is probably not the first spiritual container you've been in 
Um, maybe it is, and maybe you know it's the right one, and I trust that knowing. Um, but I think, you know, we're collecting a lot of a lot of like bright, intense people to really try new things and and experiment. And um, there's probably going to be some intensity to that. And and uh, I think being ready for that is is appropriate. Yeah, I would say this is for anybody that looks around at the other beings on this planet and says that there's there's more that can come out of of every being. There's there's more that can come out in our connections. There's there's more that can come out in our love. And and so if that's you, then this is the experimental place to to try to see what that is. And sort of related to this question is, you know, the, the last purpose I don't think that we've really touched on is coming together as a community so that this isn't like a one-off gathering, but really this is for people that, you know, if, if you've gone to the edge of, you know, what's really that allowed in, in modern culture, it's, it's kind of lonely, you know, sort of, sort of by definition, it's like, not just following everything blindly and and so it's like yeah at least for myself it's like wow i want to come together with other people and and i want to make this into a family that that supports each other after this gathering ends to to go back and take whatever gold we find together back to all of our home communities wherever from wherever in, in the world we're coming from so it's it's also for anybody who who's yet been wanting to create that that community and and be empowered and also empower others hmm. how did you know this was something you wanted to get involved with nicole because i didn't tell you very much and and somehow you knew yeah you didn't <laughs> Mm. Well, like I said, I've been part of creating some really extraordinary gatherings. And you know, during the COVID years, a lot of those gatherings were off. And during the COVID years is when I dove into possibility management and got a lot more distinction about radical responsibility, radical intimacy, radical authenticity and 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 really found spaces where 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 I could I could do the depth of emotional healing work that I had in me to do and I hadn't found spaces that that went so big as as I did in the PM game world and so to to weave in all of this from possibility management into into a uh, an edge worker gathering just it turned me on so much and you know to come where i'm not the only possibility manager that in the space and yeah because because it has it has it's been a bit heartbreaking as i've as i've kind of you know the, the post-covid gatherings that are starting up again uh has had a bittersweetness to it because the 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 expanse of what I can see is possible now for like I was talking about this this holding space for each other and and really getting to be in love with each other without having to do anything but holding space for each other without having to do anything it's there's there's so much more to it and I'm I'm alive to create next culture villages. And I, I don't think it can be done without that depth of of like like you were talking about, Enki, like the shadow work and um, and I I really want to responsibility and radical responsibility that this this distinction in possibility management that it is the relationship with responsibility that is the context of a space. 
to have a space where there's that much more shift into radical responsibility from from the spaces that I've been in where where honestly I, you know as a mother as a as an eldest daughter in my family I could so easily become the responsible victim and somewhere where I can practice not being that and 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 really be creating and holding and creating in a context of radical responsibility is something I've been hungry for. I have a quick question. I haven't heard the term responsible victim before. Would you say that's like a similar concept to the rescuer? A little bit, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm so excited to get more possibility management from you guys at this thing. The responsible victim is kind of where you're being a victim, but you fooled yourself with a couple layers of uh, it's really need it really needs to be done. Mm -hmm. I'll wash the dishes. Like, ah, uh, but it, it really has to or, or I have the time, so. So why don't I just do it? But you're still holding on to that a little bit of victim energy. So it can be, it can be tricky. And I would guess from what Nicole shares shared, it's like I, I could see, yeah, in motherhood falling into that, like really easily selling large parts of your life out of this idea of necessity that could be so deep that that you could not see your own victimhood about it. Yeah, for me, it opened up, there was so much pain when, when, you know, what I was taking responsibility for, and that I was, I was really not with myself about it. And then all of a sudden, as the victim, I had justification for revenge. And this wasn't conscious. It was, it was right under the surface, but it, it was, you know, it was devastating to discover in, in a way in retrospect how I had this justified these behaviors and because I had given so much and yeah it was really painful to start to own that Hmm. Feels like that's it. Thank you guys. It was so good to see everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Nicole, for this great idea. Uh, thank you for all figuring out how to make it work. <laughs> so nice to meet you. I adore all of you, and I'm so inspired by all of you. Yeah, it felt really great to have everyone in this space. Yeah, the amount of energy I have, I'm like, okay, I'm ready to, I'm so ready to go. I feel so fueled by this meeting <laughs> and like what's already being created just from this moment together just really lights me up for what's going to come. <laughs> wow. Okay, <laughs> this is this is this for now. Bye. Bye. Goodbye, everyone.